Hey guys, welcome back to yet another GCSE lesson. Now guys, I'm super excited to say that myself and Aaliyah from Light Up Hub have decided to team up to help you guys prepare for your upcoming mocks at the end of the February half term. So guys, we're gonna be kicking off our collab by going over the three mistakes that all GCSE students make in their creative writing and how you can avoid them. So Aaliyah, start us off with the first mistake that all students tend to make in their creative writing. Yes, let's absolutely start with it. So let's first of all look at no ambitious vocab. Now, this is a massive mistake students make during their creative writing. They don't really further their vocab. They're not looking at expanding their ideas and using that ambitious vocabulary. So rather than saying something is cold, think about, okay, how can we up level that? How can we add in and layer different techniques to make sure that our, our vocabulary, particularly the fact you're marking it for 24 marks, a massive part of your exam, making sure you up level it. So Barbara, tell us, how can they up level their vocabulary? How you can improve your ambitious vocabulary is firstly, of course, use ambitious vocabulary in your writing and specifically make sure you try to commit to memory at least 10 really powerful ambitious words. Now I'm gonna start you off with at least three that you can use in any creative writing story and you'll instantly see the quality of your writing increases. Number one, gilded. This is a really powerful, ambitious word that you could use, especially to set the scene and using it as part of pathetic fallacy. Gilded simply means golden, so you can talk about, for example, the gilded sun. Number two, iridescent, which means beautiful colors that shimmer and move with movement. For example, the iridescent ocean, which is swishing and swaying under the sunlight. And number three, festooned, which is one of my favorite ambitious words. For those of you that are studying Lord of the Flies, you'll find that William Golden uses it a lot, okay? Festoon just simply means decorated. So for example, you could talk about the balloons that are festooning a wall, for instance, in a birthday party. So Leah, what's the second mistake that all GCSE students make in their creative writing? Okay, so the second mistake is a lack of sensory language. Now, sensory language is so important to set the scene. For us to understand, especially if you're doing it from like a first-person narrative perspective, to understand how they're feeling, what are they seeing, what are they smelling, to really immerse the reader, the examiner, the teacher, whoever is marking your work, immerse them in it. You want to paint a picture. So when you're reading a book or even when you're watching a film, why do you feel so involved? Why do you feel so invested? Because everything is painted out for you. You all almost feel like you can smell, you feel like you can see what they can see or what the character can see and that is what builds a good narrative or a good creative writing story. So Barbara, what kind of things can they put in to make sure they are ticking off sensory language and they're not avoiding it? Okay, so five techniques that you could use which include all five senses are Firstly, for example, if you're describing what you can see, you can talk about, for example, the misty city or even the misty clouds, for instance. Then number two, when you're thinking about feel, right? The word numbing is really powerful sensory language. Number three, abhorrent. For instance, describing something that refers to the, the sensory language of taste. Number four, bellowing. This is really, really powerful sensory language relating to what you can hear. And number five, and this relates to what you can smell, pungent, okay? So anything that's pungent is really disgusting, really smelly, and so on, okay? Now, Leah, what's the third? technique that or rather the third mistake that students make in their creative writing okay so the third mistake is poor structure now i cannot emphasize enough the amount of students who have no structure going into their creative writing they're just writing maybe they're describing something they're trying to put in a bit of a narrative but there is no set structure so it is so important to pre-learn a structure or have something in place that you know when you go into that creative writing exam you've got something that you can follow because again in terms of the mark scheme the examiner is looking 16 marks for your actual the way that you're writing not just the words that you're putting in but the way that you structure it your sentences your paragraph level is there a cyclical structure so does it start and does it end in the same way all of these different structural techniques are so 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 important for you to boost your creative writing and also they're not hard to do you can pre-learn it the things that Barbara's about to go through with you you can pre-learn and then just put your ideas into it and done you can tick off structure so Barbara tell us how can we make sure that we don't have a poor structure 
It's so easy to solve this mistake. Just simply use the Story Mountain structure. When I mention Story Mountain, I'm literally referring to something as basic and as easy as a five paragraph structure where you start off with your beginning paragraph, you establish a setting, you establish the scene. Then in your build up, this is where you introduce a character who's going on some form of adventure. It doesn't have to be a dramatic adventure, okay? It can literally be them simply waking up, going and opening the door before you get to the problem paragraph, which is where maybe they see something really crazy, they meet the villain, whatever. Then in your fourth paragraph, as you're going down the story mountain, you resolve, they somehow resolve this issue. Again, as I said, you can have a dramatic story or it can simply be a case of them slamming the door shut, right? That also counts as a resolution before you end your story with either a cliffhanger or some kind of interesting ending. Remember when you're using this story mountain framework, number one, make sure you keep these paragraphs distinct to show your teacher and your examiner that you are developing a really robust structure, right? A really nice and easy to follow story, but also try and avoid things like cliche endings. Just try and generally avoid cliches, okay? So that's really it when it comes to creative writing. This is the common mistakes that a lot of GCSE students make in the creative writing. And of course, hopefully guys, as you can see, also the solutions that you could take in order to avoid that and see some amazing marks when you're doing your final round of GCSE mocks and of course ultimately you're preparing for your final GCSE exams. So thank you so much Aaliyah for joining and guys don't forget over on Leah's channel on YouTube we will be doing a Macbeth collabs. For those of you guys who are studying Macbeth and are desperate to know how you can effectively revise for it and the key uh, context points, etc., that you need to know, make sure you now head over to Light Up Tutoring for that video. Thanks so much, guys, for listening. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah, you were trying to like. Number three, abhor it. For instance, describing something that it's like it's like disgusting like taste or something yeah i'm gonna say something that's gonna really annoy you go on it just occurred to me that you're standing in front of this right <laughs> <laughs> there you go we're done